Big Al's Rant with Caden McFarland, powered by Jack Cassie Ford. Well, hello there. This is the rant. Caden McFarland, Big Al's going to join me in just a moment. We'll bring in our guy, Zach. Want to remind everybody, hey we're guys. on Facebook Live this year. There yes, he is, the man taking your questions. We're going to be talking about OSU and their big come from behind victory over Kansas State. Big Al and I are going to get into this. Which quarterback would you rather have, Mason Rudolph or Baker Mayfield? I think that's a fun little discussion, yeah. Mason or Baker. Uh, we'll also talk about TU's huge win. Those guys are in first place in the American Athletic Conference West Division. Uh, and things did not go so well for the Thunder against Kevin Durant the other night. But now let's bring him in, Big Al Jerkins, we joining getting, us from California. We just keep getting more and more technically advanced every week. <laughs> Look at Al, technically <laughs> advanced. Looking good, boss. Can you hear me? Not me. Don't. <laughs> don't yeah, don't count on me being technical. Trust me, my son set this all up for me. I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, just you know, if I kind of go to black or whatever, it's it's because I pushed the wrong button. Hey, I totally understand. It, Al joining us via FaceTime, and uh, it was freezing up a little bit, and people who are watching closely now can maybe see that. I, I this is good advice. Anytime you're on camera, but make sure you don't pick your nose because <laughs> if you're even close, it may look like you've been doing it for about four or five straight minutes. <laughs> Not career ending, just mortifying, yes. I would think. It would get, you know what? It would get around big time in this day and age. <laughs> All right, tell everybody why you're in California, Al. Uh, uh, my brother had a couple of horses, we, we thought, running in the Breeders' Cup Classic yesterday, which you saw on Channel 2, hopefully. Right. Um, one of the horses had to scratch on Friday, and then FNX, our horse didn't run so well, probably ran his worst race of his career, but it was a great finish. Uh, but the Breeders' Cup was held at Santa Anita, beautiful Santa Anita. 73,000 people showed up wow. to watch California Chrome and Arrogate go at it down the stretch, and it was a great horse race. It was a great two days of racing. So uh, it was a big day for the Jerkins family. Uh, didn't end so well, uh, but it also gave us a chance to be around family. And uh, I'm currently in my son's house with his three children and lovely wife. And uh, I've been staying with them for the last couple of days. So uh, it's, been a, it's a, been a great time. Yeah, good. Uh, it's, uh, thank you for joining us via FaceTime. And I'm glad you're getting to spend a little bit of time with the kids in California. Sorry about you Shaman's bet. Ghost and uh, uh, FNX, but, you know. Get them next time. Jimmy's got some great horses, I know. All right, let's, let's get into the he football, does, Big yeah. Al. Um, OSU with a big win yesterday. Come from behind win, 43-37 over Kansas State. This team has now won five straight Big 12 games, and they got as good a shot as mm -hmm. anybody to win the Big 12. If they win out, they are Big 12 champions. This victory, when you're on the road, it's just kind of a survive and advance thing, right? Even if it's not pretty, a win's a win's a win. Especially on the road, as we've known. We've seen that happen over and over again. But how many times has Kansas State beaten team in this fashion on their home field? Yep. OSU really proved something to me yesterday by coming from behind and winning uh, at Kansas State. Uh, you know, sometimes it's not going to be pretty, as you mentioned. Um, and I know this is going to lead into whether or not we'd rather have Rudolph or Mayfield. Uh, OU struggled a little bit on Thursday night. The two, that was kind of a trap game for them. Yes. So both quarterbacks, you know, had, had those quarterbacks not been on their A game, uh, neither team's going to win. Yeah. I think we got a couple of good quarterbacks, and as you say, we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, the special teams play was really poor. OSU turned it over three times. Mm -hmm. Two of them were Mason Rudolph interceptions, and they gave up 345 yards on the ground. Of those three, poor special teams play against K-State, that happens a lot. The turnovers, three on the road, that happened at Baylor as well. Uh, and then giving up 345 yards on the ground against a team that really gets the quarterback involved heavily running the ball. Which of those three would concern you the most going forward for OSU? I'm guessing they're giving up the yards on the ground. Sure. Um, because turnovers are going to happen. Kansas State has a tendency to force turnovers of that nature um we've seen that happen remember uh, what was it, a couple of years ago and OU should have beaten Kansas State at home right. and they turned it over several times and got beat uh you know I, I look at it as the glass half full because uh when you when you can overcome situations like that 
I think you become a stronger football team for it. Sure. Uh, you know, I was before the season started. I I thought a two loss team could win the conference championship. Now I'm not so sure. And I, I know a lot of Big 12 fans are going to say, "Who needs a championship game? It could be the Bedlam game that turns out to be the championship yeah. game." Yeah. I mean. If you had to guess right now, wouldn't you say the, the conference champ is going to come from right here in Oklahoma, either OU or OSU? Yeah, I just hope it's not 18 below zero, like it was the last <laughs> we had, had this scenario, if you recall. Yeah, well, uh, you've been gone, but I mean, it's been Southern California weather here uh, for the last few days. Mm -hmm. I guess now the temperature is just starting to dip a bit, and it's just starting to begin, like, feel like fall. And we just had an earthquake of 5.0, mm -hmm. Al, like within the last hour. What is going on here? That should be going on where you are in my California. My wife called me and was my wife called me and was scared stiff. Yeah. She was really shaken up. Uh, so it was a 5, huh? Not was, a 4 5. It was a 5. It, it was up, legit. A little uh, bigger than the oh, one the we had. The epicenter was Pawnee, I take it. Uh, it uh, so Cushing, it was more actually. than a 4 5. Cushing. Yeah, it was about a yeah, 5.0. And if, for everybody on Facebook right now, check out our Facebook page. We have some damaged pictures already from Cushing. Uh, yeah, that thing is no Holy joke. Cow. All right. Speaking of no joke, Al, this is, this is what I wanted to get into, and uh, we'll be on your radio show tomorrow and want to get into this then as well. I, I, interesting right. to see what people think. Mason Rudolph versus Baker Mayfield. And let me pose the question to you this way, because the answers could be different. I'm not asking which, which quarterback you think is better or which quarterback would you take over the course of a season, but if you had one game to win against a legit opponent, mm -hmm. let's say somebody maybe with like an SEC defense, which quarterback do you want? All right. Um, boy, this is a loaded question because I know we're going to make some people of some <laughs> of fan bases mad. That's what I want, baby. I would take – huh? That's what I want, baby. Let's make people mad. By this much, by this much, Baker Mayfield to win a college game. Now, if you were to ask me who would get drafted higher by the NFL, I think I may go Rudolph. Yes. But to win a college game, I think I would take Baker Mayfield because I think he's got a little bit more of that intangible to win a college game. Yep. Let me uh, – I love Baker Mayfield, and I absolutely understand what you're saying about the intangibles. He's got that in spades. He is a gamer – He's got a more accurate arm, I think, than Mason Rudolph, all things considered. Um, you can count mm -hmm. on Baker's arm a little bit more often. Rudolph can overthrow the ball. In some days, he, he just doesn't have it. Um, let's start first. First of all, my answer is Mason Rudolph. I, I want Mason Rudolph against okay. a legit team. A lot of it is his height. I think that teams that can control OU's front, somebody who's got a really good defensive front, um, I think they can get to Mayfield, kind of like we saw with Clemson last year at the end of the year and like we saw with Ohio State this year. I think that his size becomes a liability against elite opponents, and I love that Mason is standing back there at six foot five. And by the way, he's pretty mobile. He's, he can certainly move around in the pocket, kind of like a Tom Brady type. And then he's also pretty good at picking up three or four yards going forward when he needs to. So I like his escapability. The thing that worries you a little bit about Mason is, like I said, he can be inaccurate at times, but usually that happens against the weaker opponents on the schedule. In the big games, this guy's awfully good. Uh, and even last year when they got hammered by LSU in the Sugar Bowl, he was good, I thought. And it was everybody around him who was getting beat uh, play after play. Uh, but I love Mason Rudolph in big games, and I would take Mason. I'm glad you went Baker because I think it makes the conversation a little more interesting. But aren't you struck by how similar they are, even though they're very – I mean, Baker is short, Mason's tall. They have some slightly different strengths. But both guys lead with toughness, don't they? We've seen Mason a couple of times run the ball, dive into the end zone, take a hit. Baker certainly does that. I think they're both gamers and leaders in the best possible sense, both really confident. Are you struck by how similar they are, even though their games are different? Well, uh, they are similar. I mean, I think Rudolph is a little bit more agile than people give them credit for. But I do think that Rudolph has a better overall wide receiver core. Now, we could turn this question around and say, who would you rather have, D.D. Westbrook or Washington? Um, I think we could make a similar case for both. I just think overall, 
Mayfield has less to work with when it comes to the receiving core. However, it's obvious that OU's running game, when healthy uh, right. and not suspended, uh, that they have the better running game. So, yes. I mean, they face off of the, you know, they, 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 how do I want? How do I? I think Mayfield has more weapons running game wise. I don't think he has as many weapons passing game yeah. wise as does Rudolph. No, I, I think you're exactly right there. That OSU wide receiving core is much deeper than what OU's dealing with. Uh, but like you said, the OU running game right. is better. Which offensive scheme do you like better? Offensive coordinator included. Which guy do you think is in the better scheme? Uh, I guess it depends on who they're playing. Uh, but both teams have been able to figure that out, haven't they? Yeah, um, been good this year. Let's face it, OSU was in trouble the other day, and they came through with an important drive when they needed it the most. Um, you know, when I see the more trick, trickeration type of plays, I start to wonder, what are these guys thinking? Why do they have to do this when they have, you know, they can do it more vanilla uh, in, in, in the way they, they approach things. Um, so when they go to the trickeration plays, I kind of get the feeling and maybe the offensive coordinators think that maybe they're not doing their assignments properly and we got to catch them off guard some other way and they don't really feel uh, adequate in, in what they've been practicing all week. I just, I, I the more trickeration, the more nervous I get. Sure. Maybe it's just that in the Big 12, when you got to run 120 plays a game, some of them have to be trick plays. You just run out of plays <laughs> or something. <laughs> well. Uh, anyway, I, Mace- I got to tell you, and I don't make my family mad here, but we sat here and watched the UCLA Colorado game. Yes. And that was not a pretty game to watch. No. Uh, now, we've seen a lot of that type of play in the Big 12, but the UCLA Colorado game would make Big 12 fans feel a little bit better about themselves. I was uh, watching, it, the, it seemed like they threw uh, a personal foul. Now, penalty Washington, on like five Washington straight looked plays great last point. night, late. Uh, and they, they may get they may get screwed again in the in the final poll because I have a feeling Ohio State's going to pass Washington for the final four after next week's poll. Oh, you're always looking for something like that. You might be right. I hadn't thought of that yet, but yeah, that's the one to watch where the brand name might jump up and overtake a conference champ uh, right. with a little lower profile. Now I think Washington's gained a lot of respect from people, um, but yeah, that'll that'll mm-hmm. be interesting to watch. All right. Um, let's move into TU, Al. You got by, to see by the some way, of this I game, watch, I understand, last night. Right, right. Um, I did watch the game last night, and I thought I was watching the East Carolina Network. Um, <laughs> I couldn't believe these announcers. TU's up 17-7, and they're praising East Carolina for all the things they've done. Is so that what right? Game why are they watching? I couldn't believe what I was hearing from these people. No, you're right. Who, who's this doing thing the was game domination. anyway? I never heard of these guys. This thing was domination. TU, I mean, it, it, 45-24 doesn't do it justice. The Golden Hurricane controlled this game much more than that. I don't know if you realize this, but ECU had won six straight against the Golden Hurricane, and that streak goes back like a decade. They hadn't beat these guys in a decade, Al. Uh, including the championship game that was played at Tulsa when they were in the Conference USA. What right. was that, five years ago now? Uh, 2008, um, so however yeah, many they, years they ago that big, is. They had a big quarterback then. Uh, I mean, they were, they were really a good football team. Yeah, no doubt. Um, what impressed you most last night from TU? Dane Evans was really, really sharp, got him into the right place, threw three touchdowns. Right. I thought the defense set the tone, and they were terrific. And then how about the running game, where Flanders and Brewer both run for 180 Absolutely. yards? This, this is why they can beat Navy. I think they can beat Navy at their own game, obviously not in the wishbone, but controlling the line of scrimmage and controlling the clock, keeping Navy off the field. And let's face it, if TU can get a big lead like they got last night, I think they got Navy on the ropes. Oh, no doubt. Uh, the question there is can that TU defense get off the field against a Navy offense that does what they do right. better than anybody in the country? They shorten the game. Notre Dame, I believe, only had the ball six times yesterday. Navy defeating Notre Dame 28-27. Uh, I don't th- TU goes faster than Notre Dame, so I think they'll be able to generate more offensive possessions than that. But if you only get the ball eight or nine times, you have to be really efficient. And last year, TU's defense showed they really had no idea how to deal with the triple option what kind of adjustments can Bill Young make? I, how exciting is this, Al? It, I mean, if I had told you 10 years ago, Tulsa would be playing the Naval Academy for first place in a conference 
What in the world would you think of that? What would you say to that? I mean, TU is going to travel all the way to the East Coast to face Navy. First place on the line. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's interesting, but you know, if you look back at TU's history books, this isn't the first time they played for a conference championship or first place. I mean, sure. whatever conference they've been in, they've been in a conference. Obviously, they were independent for so many years and went to the Freedom Bowl, what was it, 91. They were still independent back then. They went to the WAC. They went to the Conference A. They were, they've been all over the map. Um, but you're right. They used to play in a West Coast-based conference. Now they go to NATO Championship. Yeah. They've played East Carolina. They've beaten Central Florida for a conference championship. Um, you know, we talk about the rebuilding of Tulsa, but Blankenship had a good team. Uh, the coach, yep. obviously, Todd Graham had a, a good team. Um, so this this really isn't anything new. I wish more people would appreciate it. I wish more sure. people would show up for the ball game. I, I was watching the game last night. And, um, didn't look like the numbers were too good in the second half. Yeah. Um, but you tell me, I mean, what was the crowd like last night? Not uh, not good enough. Uh, not what this team deserves at the moment, yeah. uh, in in my opinion. I, look, only right. one home game left. It's the day after Thanksgiving. It, regardless of what happens here in the next two weeks, I do hope that fans will show up because this team is certainly represented well uh, and earned that. Uh, and if they can beat Navy, I... <laughs> That would be a monumental win yeah. and the kind of thing I just did not see coming, even though I thought they'd win eight games this year. I, I did not see that kind of season coming. Do you have a pick on TU Navy? Thumbs up, thumbs down? I, I'm, I'm going with the upset, man. I'm going with TU, baby. I love it. Hey, before we get out of here, as I started the game, I just because I just want to introduce the people. Now, say hi to Oklahoma. This is Oliver. This is Reese. Reese is the one, Caden, that helped keep – Russell Westbrook with the Thunder. Yes. I just want you to know that. Remember that picture we ran and autograph, getting the autograph? Well, you can see the cat, the caption where she said, Russell, we need you to stay in Oklahoma. That's right. All right? That's right. Say, good, say goodbye, Oliver. Oliver and Reese. I wish we could see right, them. I can't see them. It's frozen. The video is frozen, but we can hear them. And thanks for saying hi. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Reese, for uh, telling Russell Westbrook to stay, for making him stay. Yes. That, that was that was really doing us a solid. I right. really appreciate it. <laughs> I had to do that. You know, it's my family obligation. I had to do that, my man. <laughs> Absolutely. We will not even talk about Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and what happened uh, on Thursday night. Like that just never happened. Thunder's five and one. <laughs> Who cares about what happened against Golden State? Big Al, thanks so much. He's frozen. Exactly. He's frozen, but he's okay. We can hear his voice. All right, have fun on the radio show the next two days, and I'll see you Wednesday. You got it. My pleasure, boss. Thank you so much. We have a couple comments, and let's couple go ahead and comments. bring those in. So, first of all, going back uh, to your Mason Rudolph, Baker Mayfield, yes. everyone said uh, everyone said Baker Mayfield. Everyone. Everyone. I think we had one person say <sighs> Rudolph. One person. Everyone's with Baker Mayfield. This is the Sooner State, isn't it? <laughs> Cowboy fans, you need to represent a little bit more. Most of our questions on Facebook Live week after week come from Sooner people. That Just like we called true. out the TU fans a moment ago, we're calling out OSU fans. You know, and I think I'm starting to become a fan of OSU. We talked a little bit about <laughs> last week how, yeah. uh, how I don't really know that much about sports, but Saturday's game, yesterday's game, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, it well, was biting my nails a couple times. They, they do make it interesting. Uh, and I, I knew that uh, my Mason Rudolph pick would not be, uh, not necessarily popular, but I knew it wouldn't be the plurality. Uh, but I really think big game against an elite opponent. I like Mason Rudolph. Well, we had one person, one, one person, person agree me with and, you. Me and that person are simpatico. <laughs> you get along. That's right. And going, right. go ahead. Going out on a positive note, we had a couple comments. Donna said, uh, "Cool, so happy for uh, the hurricane," and Chris says, "Golden" in all caps. Absolutely. Yep. Donna, proud of, Chris. Proud of TU. Absolutely. And I'm sure they're right. the kind of people who get out there to the game, so that's awesome. Uh, we have the Raiders up over the Broncos 20 to 10. Oakland's been impressive so far. Uh, that does it for Big Al's rant with Cade McFarland <laughs> with Big Al in California. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We'll see you guys tonight after this ball game, which is, you know, 1130 or midnight or whatever. Once again, thanks. Thanks for watching the rant. Take care. Big Al's Rant with Caden McFarland, powered by Jack Cassie Ford.